everybody in this video we're going to be talking about the best deck tiers from the last week we're also going to be talking about kang bursting onto the scene today and some counters a lot of people are talking about is this guy going to be op is he going to be broken all these sort of things let's talk about that a little bit and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below on whether you think he's going to totally change the game and if these counters are actually going to work all right first up we do this every week uh you're probably used to seeing this but i like to comment on it make sure everybody's kind of seeing it snap zone uh i think this is a great website there's two tier one decks obviously lockjaw and thanos and shuri zero are still out there uh let's see about five tier two or no yeah five tier two decks We'll go through those a uh, few tier three and some tier fours the first one they've got is the lockjaw thanos one in this one you're probably seeing this a lot it's pretty typical uh you've got some pretty strong cards here in your your lockjaw your wave leech uh a lot on he's just a stud uh arrow and then you've got thanos in your hand just with the lockjaw to start pulling some of those things out so that you can and then with the quinjet basically those stones are free some movement uh, manipulation with arrow and magneto uh, uh, just a generally great deck i'm still need who i still need on this i still need wave quinjet she Hulk, thanos anyway it's uh, i look forward to playing that at some point and then next up shuri zero uh you see a lot of this with the the shuri doubling up of uh red skull or a she hulk or even an arrow sometimes a task mastering that uh zero titania or a lizard cosmo to wreck anything polaris to move some stuff around uh this is a generally a pretty good deck uh i think you see it a lot on the lower levels but it, it does work if you're just trying to get some pure power out there those are definitely the top two that i've kind of been seeing out there a bit i do don't i actually don't play either i don't know we'll see where the deck i play at but again i my collection level is 1100 zabu sarah control another deck i wish i had or another card i wish i had in sarah sarah control obviously where you've got the sarah where it's going to reduce the the cost of the cards in your hand uh whenever you're playing later in the game so what you really want to do here is throw a bunch of stuff in your opponent's hand you can do that with korg maximus rock slide or really it's the deck because you want you want those cards to be sitting in their deck you want them to be full and them being unable to play things you want to be able to potentially manipulate locations with polaris if they do play any of those rocks uh maximus obviously putting more stuff into their hand i also would it's not in here but i also would consider baron mordo in this uh it brings a card in that they probably can't play i know it doesn't uh help with dark hawk per se but it's, it's something to think about if you're looking to control the board a little bit i would also consider mystique somewhere in here to potentially comp, uh, copy the dark hawk I think that can make that a little bit stronger depending on what you got but again you got to make sure your power uh your your curve is sitting there right thanos ongoing zoo just loading up the board a little bit get those ones out there there's obviously only a couple ones here but you've got thanos uh to help build those up your ongoings you've got uh, some additional points on there you've got blue marvel to give some additional points you've got valkyrie to set some things down at three you've got goose to limit who can be played on certain locations Kazar to help build up those ones even more uh, this is a really pretty solid set Cosmo's always a tough bad bad dog uh anytime he disrupts anything I'm actually a little surprised that this one for as much complaining that's been out there for this one the Electro Sandman ramp uh where you I mean if you can get uh Sandman out early as possible he can really do a lot of damage and then you've got a Doom out there that you can ideally play and then odin if you can find a way to do it man that that I, a lot of times i'll just straight up leave these because but again i'm playing a negative deck so you know when i get sandman that makes things pretty much impossible for me uh but the electro ramp slash sandman ramp um i thought that would maybe be more tier one it didn't make it your lockjaw thor is still out there for you know getting out your thor getting out your jane foster to bring in mjolnir uh, Dracula you got some big cards in your hand just to potentially discard later make sure you don't leave Jubilee or Wasp or anything like that in your hand or you will be screwed uh and then uh we've got Galactus who stills lingering I actually enjoy playing against Galactus players a little bit they don't always Doc Ock and then play it but you know I've actually had some Doc Ock's help me it's been kind of fun uh but this is sort of your standard Galactus deck and you know you hope you get your death pretty cheap there at the uh, on one of the last turns if you can get galactus in there before turn six still a top-notch deck 
out there a lot of people playing it Ze uh, zabu devil die a dark hawk still out there again we've talked about some of these earlier uh this is again filling up your hand you've got the backup for devil dinosaur you got moon girl to help double anything up which is phenomenal you've got you do they do have mystique in this one to copy either dark hawk or devil dinosaur uh or even zabu if you want to but i don't know if i'd do that i mean you do have a number of four cards there uh and so doubling up on a zabu isn't the worst idea with that death wave is all the way down at tier three uh this is a little surprising i suppose i see a lot more of these i'm seeing a ton 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 of death waves right now but again my collection level is a little different the wave manipulation the arrow manipulation uh just a lot of destruction so you can de death down uh a chavez uh will come at the back end so you can make sure you get all these cards early on pretty solid uh i also i mean venom i don't uh, i don't know who you'd put you'd replace out of there with venom but I'm, I'm i do like venom sometimes especially when you can get that cloning vat good lord that guy can be a beast uh your regular discard dracula i think everyone's pretty used to this modok i'm not seeing a ton of these unless i'm actually playing my discard deck i did a video on this and it was just it was just nuts it was just like okay uh so anyway that's that one patriot deck i think everybody's sort of used to that with you know just basically patriot all the building up the non the non-ability cards with your Ultron, etc., uh, getting the double up and onslaught. Our negative Zabu, all the way down here on tier four. This is the deck I play, except for I don't have a lot of these cards like Bast or Psylocke um, or Wong or Absorbing Man. I also don't play Gambit in this one at all. I have a much different situation. I play with Shuri in mine. Uh, I don't play with Wolfsbane. I play with Super Scroll. Uh, it can actually be a lot of fun and be uh, there's a lot of surprise tactics in it which i enjoy better but uh the negative zabu is all the way down here breaks my heart and then uh kazoo i've never heard this name before but i'm a noob so uh, kazoo zeracula or whatever it's called so a bunch of zoo cards to throw out there dracula to discard hopefully red skuller uh the infinite all right kazar to help build up some points with those ones i would maybe consider I mean, I guess armor makes sense a little bit if you've got to play some of these other ones, but... All right, so let's get to the main point here. Kang. Everybody's freaking out about... Well, Kang, maybe. Is he going to be OP? Uh, is he going to break the game? It's definitely a strong card. And honestly, I think he should be. It's a... Uh, Kang is one of the big bads in all of the lore of Marvel Comics. I think that they do need to make this a strong card. I am not upset that they have him staying in that Series 5 along with Galactus and Thanos. If you're unaware of that, that is happening. So it's a strong card. Cost five, no power. And basically when you, what you do is you play it, you look at what your opponent did, and then it restarts the turn. The biggest thing with this that everybody's sort of wondering about or thinking maybe is broken is what I'm, it's called the bluff snap. So he also resets snaps. So you can snap, play king, it resets the turn, including the snap. So you can bluff snap somebody and they, maybe they leave. I um, I love that play, honestly. I think that alone, if it wins you a cube, okay. If it wins you two cubes, okay. If you've got Kang in your hand, you might want to snap even earlier so that you at least get two cubes. Um, but wait a minute, that goes uh, there goes the bluff snap. So I don't know. Um, I do like the idea that Kang can help you if you have a terrible hand going and uh, there's nothing on the board already for you. You snap, turn five you know play king they still play it's like all right you know what i'm not risking it anymore they actually have they're they're willing to play through a snap they've obviously got something good here so while everybody's going to be playing this, this this week or at least a lot of the whales kraken type people you're going to see a lot of people playing it i would highly recommend paying attention to that seeing how it's playing more importantly if you're watching one of my videos you're likely looking for uh what the counter would this to be because you're probably got a lower collection level and if you don't and you're still watching this thank you appreciate it I think you might want to know the counter anyway, right? Because anybody who's going against Kang, maybe they don't get them. They're not quite at that high level yet, uh, or they just don't want to, they want to play a different deck. So I'm going to talk about the counters. The first counter, and, and again, I think this can be helpful for uh, any collection level uh, out there, but I mainly wanted to focus on people who definitely wouldn't be able to get Kang or wouldn't necessarily want to save for Kang, even though I do think he could potentially play in any deck I mean, it just, if you're willing to have him in there and you've got a spot that's sort of a flex spot, what's wrong with playing King? I mean, you literally get a free look at something. You get a free bluff snap. It it makes sense. I mean, I think I, I like that. So if you can ever get him, I think it's phenomenal. And definitely, you know, it, I hope you saved potentially your, 
your reserves or cash is to maybe get this guy granted the the chance was pretty low but uh we'll see so all right now the counters to the counters you probably already know them so i we don't we don't have to focus on that maybe or maybe we will we'll see all right first one daredevil this goes without saying right you well kang's a five cost turn or five cost card play daredevil see when he comes out okay now just throw trash out there all right that makes seems to make sense i think it's great i mean you, you win right you you know that they're playing kang you're not showing your hand because you've already daredevil to kang cool you know you still control turn five i think that's great you've seen them do a kang you've seen them snap it is not gonna mess anything up in the world more on that in a little bit now the the real the real counter to kang that i think that no one's really gonna be able to mess with and i think a lot of players if not most players have leech you will wreck kang with leech you just straight up like because kang's if it one if the kang is in the hand at all when you're pulling this out now again well if, if they play kang on five again i'll get to that in a minute but if you play leech with a lock jaw maybe and you bring this out and he's got the person's got kang in their hand by kang you just got leeched and leech really i mean leech honestly is like the the troll of all troll cards out there so if you want to have a troll deck you need to have leech in it he's the mighty disruptor it just honestly i think it's a counter to everything and it or almost everything no everything assuming somebody hasn't already played their cerebro or patriot if they still have it in hand then yeah it's a counter to basically everything so i would if you are just getting wrecked by kang over and over put leech in your deck just put them in there absolutely put them in there use them on turn five or if i do, if you've got a lock jaw or something see if you can draw them out earlier just make sure that whatever cards you're potentially lock jawing into the field that they're cards that you're happy with all right so now the counters to these counters i did want to throw something at the end so first off if you do have kang you should probably be playing them on turn six i mean just straight up you should be playing them on turn six it's a it's more of a critical part of the game five does matter that immediately erases the daredevil counter see you later it's gone right so it doesn't matter it's but i honestly i'd still consider having daredevil in hand because he's a pretty cheap card and he's super strong and it still helps you with that turn five regardless all right now leech sorry you're just no nah, nah, i got nothing for you there's no like i mean it, you know what maybe they need a card to, the, that they need to make that protects against effects happening to the cards in hand that'd be kind of fun like a counter to iceman scorpion leech you know that could be you know what I'd, I'd like to see something at a one or two cost card there with zero power i think that could be pretty cool you know you throw that out there and those type of cards can't affect your anything in hand uh that could be pretty neat but they don't have that right now so leech still is going to bite you in the butt so uh now the other parts that i want to say with this is you could play Kang in a Mr. Negative deck and try to play him earlier. Or if you've got a seven tar or turn game, play him later. But again, Leech still sort of screws you. Uh, the other part here is I would consider Moon Girl with Kang uh, and maybe even Mr. Negative as well, where you double it up and you could get multiple Kangs out there. You can play Kang on four. Uh, maybe you have a Daredevil for five and then you can play Kang on six. Good God, how troll would that be? It'd be amazing. But again, at the end of the day, Leech all day, every day. Leech is just going to wreck everybody's world who's playing King because, you know, it's Leech. And Leech is the OP of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, of the Marvel Comic Universe, of all Marvel Universe. Leech is the OG. So get Leech in your deck. Make sure you're playing Leech. King shouldn't be too much of a problem with you there, unless King gets played on turn five and then they hope to uh, maybe cosmo you somewhere and not let you leech there there's your there's your counter to leech i guess is hope you cosmo them right cosmo everywhere hope oh, you can't get that anywhere i don't know manipulate locations with whatever you can so anyway that's all i got uh i hope this video has been helpful for you if it is please consider hammering down on that like button sharing with your aunts uncles nieces nephews or anybody who might be playing the game appreciate it while we try to grow the channel and until next time i hope you have a wonderful day